Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jaylee and today we're in the kitchen. Um, I have been sitting on this recipe for a few days now and I finally went and got everything I needed today and yesterday. We went to the farmer's market and picked up a few things. This recipe is perfect. It's a rainy cold day today and um, this recipe is perfect for a day like that. So if you're like me wherever you are in the world and spring is just being really stubborn and not wanting to come out, then this is the recipe for you. I also really wanted to make this recipe because I've come to you with all of this information about not eating seed oils and eating organic and you know things like that and this is a perfect recipe for following those principles and this is along the lines of the kind of stuff I've been eating since making all of these changes in my life and so I'm really happy to share it with you we're making a creamy cabbage soup uh, I don't really have like a full name for it. It's just, it's a milk dairy based uh, cabbage soup. I went to the farmer's market and um, just kind of looked around to see what was available. I was seeing a lot of onions, a lot of potatoes, a lot of carrots, a lot of cabbage. I was seeing garlic. I was seeing a lot of salad greens and things like that. That's what's available right now in my area. And so I purchased onions, cabbage, and carrots. And I did also pur purchase some salad greens, but we're not using them today. And I thought a nice soup would be perfect. I'm actually feeling kind of bluff today. Rainy days are hard for me sometimes, um, but I'm here and we're gonna make this recipe together. So on my cutting board, I have a clove of garlic. I've got an onion, a small head of cabbage, and a carrot. We're gonna go ahead and cut these things up. Normally with a soup, I would probably grate a carrot, um, but my grater is in the dishwasher that's currently running, so I'm just gonna go ahead and um, cut it into, I'll probably do like half coins, maybe. I actually ended up cutting each coin into quarters, and I think that'll be perfect for a soup. I'm gonna go ahead and chop up this onion now. I also have um, a veggie scrap bowl here. I'm not going to use this entire onion. I'm only going to use half of the onion. However, I'm sorry if you can hear my dishwasher. Later in the week, I am going to use, because I'm also only using half this head of cabbage, and I have another cabbage recipe that I will be making later in the week. Um, and so I'm going to still chop everything up today since I'm here and I'm doing it. Why not do it all? Um, and I will just set it aside. Uh, probably put it in a Tupperware container or put it in the fridge until I am ready for it later in the week. Now for this soup, you could put whatever you want in it. And I stress that as often as I can on this channel because I really want you to be creative and cook to you and your family's own personal tastes. So you could add celery. You could add sweet potato or squash. You could add spinach. I'm actually, um, spinach would be a really good one. I'm one of those weirdos. I don't like cooked spinach. I like fresh, crisp spinach in um, a salad. Or I put spinach in my daily smoothie, but it's like obliterated, obviously, in the blender. And so the color is there, but there's no, you know, shape that I can make out. And that's about it. I do not like like soggy spinach in a soup, but if that's your thing, that would be a wonderful addition to a recipe like this. You could even add in zucchini if you wanted to. Um, honestly, anything, whatever you want um, to add. It's just a soup, so you could add any of those things. But now's the time because we are going to actually be sauteing these veggies in my skillet. Well, actually, you know what? We're I'm gonna make this in my cast iron Dutch oven and I think I'm probably just gonna go ahead and saute everything in there because next after that we'll be adding broth and I can just go ahead and do it all in one Dutch oven, my one Dutch oven instead of using a separate pan for that. I think that's probably what we'll do. And that'll be good because we can use the broth to get up any little stuck on bits from the bottom of the Dutch oven and that'll be lovely. Okay, so this is all good to go. Let me move it over here a little bit, make some room. And I will cut up the other half of this onion, but I'll do it in a second. I wanna get this going. So this is actually my very first time cooking with a head of cabbage. I have a really, I have this habit of always taking the outer layer off. I do it with everything I buy from the store and I'm even gonna do it from farmer's market because I don't know who touched this, so I'm just gonna go for it. All right, I'm just gonna cut this right down the center here. And we're gonna set this other half aside for later in the week. 
And this is what it looks like on the inside. And I'm just gonna go through and slice it up. All right, and then I'm just gonna kind of roughly take it and chop it the other direction to try and get the pieces a bit smaller. Okay, I just kind of went through and did a bit of a rough chop just to try to get any big pieces that got left chopped up. I think that looks pretty good. You might notice I have not yet diced up um, my garlic clove. I usually wait until the end. I'm not gonna add it in with the rest of the veggies because I have a really bad habit of burning garlic and it drives me crazy. So I always wait until the very end to add in the garlic. Okay, now I have my enameled cast iron Dutch oven. I'm going to set that to medium heat. Every now and then my range doesn't wanna light. I just gotta take flame to it. I'm probably actually going to set it to like a medium low heat just because with cast iron and open flame, it can get hot really fast and I don't wanna burn these veggies. I've got a pretty decent sized pat of butter here, at what, maybe two tablespoons that I'm gonna go ahead and get melting in there. Okay, our butter is all warm, nice and bubbling, so we're gonna go ahead and add our carrots, our onions, and our cabbage to this pot. Remember that what we are making here is a soup. So I'm going to go ahead and generously salt and pepper our vegetables now. And I won't be adding any more salt and I won't be salting the end product either unless I feel it really, really needs it. The reason that you want to add the salt early on in the cooking process is because as the vegetables are being heated, the salt is actually diffusing into the actual vegetable itself. It is crossing the cellular membranes of the vegetable and becoming, going into the vegetable. And so when you salt and season early on in the cooking process, you're gonna end up with a more better distributed, well-rounded flavor in the end than if you were to salt and pepper your final product only. So we're gonna go ahead and keep an eye on this and keep it moving because I don't want any of this to burn or brown too much. Oh, it already smells good and it's only been a minute. You wanna to try to get all of the vegetables coated with the butter. While this is working, I'll go ahead and mince up my clove of garlic here. Now here in a few minutes, we're gonna be adding quite a bit of chicken broth to this. And you might be wondering, couldn't you just put it all in at the same time? Yeah, you certainly could. If you wanted to cook these vegetables in the chicken broth, you could still get a nice soft vegetable appropriate for a soup doing it that way. However, I find that sauteing the vegetables this way first, getting a little bit of that brown color on the onions and letting everything just sit in the salt and pepper and, and saute together before we add in any liquids, really adds an extra depth of flavor that you wouldn't get if you just more or less boiled the vegetables in your liquid. And Tom and I do not like bland, flavorless soups. To me, there's really no point in eating a soup if it's just gonna be bland and flavorless. So anything I can do to get an, a little bit of extra flavor in there, I'm going to go that extra step. I'm gonna go ahead and add in my garlic now. You could add more garlic if you want. I'm running pretty low, so I'm just gonna sacrifice one clove. Now would also be a good time to add in whatever herbs you're planning on using. You could use thyme. Thyme would be a really good one in this recipe. I would probably go for rosemary, but I'm biased and I just absolutely love rosemary. However, my rosemary is already outside and it is raining and I don't feel like going out there. So I think what I'm probably gonna do, I think I'll probably add a couple of whole bay leaves but I'm not gonna do it just yet um, because I like to remove my bay leaves at the end of whatever it is I'm using them for. And um, if I put it in here now, because there's not really that much liquid, there's too good of a chance that they get like broken up in here. So I'm gonna wait until I have my chicken broth in here and then I'll add the bay leaves. Oh, the soup. I already feel better just standing over a hot, delicious bowl of vegetables sauteing in whole, but like 
this is a this butter I get from a local farmer, so it's a really good quality butter. With the salt and the pepper, mm, it smells so good. I definitely have to pick up the pace here because we have to leave in about 20 minutes to go to my niece's birthday dinner. Happy birthday, Ella. And um, we're almost done though, won't be much longer. So I think at this point, these have been sauteing for a few minutes. I think I'm probably gonna go ahead and add in my broth. Now I recommend either a chicken broth or a vegetable broth. I pretty much don't ever use vegetable broth because I make all of my own broth now. And so I have chicken broth in the fridge that I just made fresh, um, I think it was about five days ago. So let me get that. I do not skim the fat off of my broth unless I am going to can it because I happen to really like the fat. So I'm gonna go ahead and add a cup of that right in here. Oh, oh my gosh. Yes, please. And I'm just going to, before I add in the rest, use that to try and make sure that deglaze the, the pot, basically. If there's any little brown bits or any vegetables stuck to the bottom, I'm going to use this as an opportunity to scrape those up because anything like that is just going to be more flavor in your soup. Yum, yum, yum. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and add, let's see how much. I'm not really sure. Another two cups. I definitely need another one three cups. We are going to be thickening this with a roux, but we're also going to be adding cream. I think I want to add maybe another half a cup. I ended up with about three and a half cups of broth. Just kind of eyeball it. Use your own discretion there. Three to four cups, somewhere in there. So this is the point where I want to add in my bay leaves. I think I'll do, I'll do three. Okay, I am going to set this, get those leaves in there. I'm gonna set this on the back burner. Turn that one on. I'm just gonna turn that on kind of just a step above low and let that, put the lid on it loosely, let that just kind of sit and simmer. I'm gonna get my cast iron skillet out. Okay. Next, I want to get a healthy amount of butter. This is probably three to four tablespoons, I'd say. And I wanna get that melting in my skillet. I always use my whisk when I'm making a roux. I find whisks are way more um, useful for making sure that you have a nice smooth roux without any clumps. Okay, to this butter, I'm gonna add a fourth a cup of all-purpose flour, and I'm going to whisk this in. And this is looking exactly like how it's supposed to be looking. I know it's kind of strange if you've never made a roux before. And you also need to make sure you keep it moving because you don't want it to burn. Nice and smooth, no more clumps. Now, this is milk from my local um, farmer and there's a nice cream line. Let me see if I can turn that off. Let me see if I can show you. It's got, yeah, you can kind of see it, a really nice cream line. So this recipe, you want both cream and milk but I want to go ahead and spoon off some of the cream first because if I were to just like shake it and get it all incorporated, I probably wouldn't end up with as much cream as I want. So I'm gonna spoon this off, make sure I get some of this really, really rich, good cream in here. Turn this back on. And I'm gonna keep whisking it together. You want to keep this moving, keep it nice and smooth. The whisk is the perfect tool for this. See how it's nice and smooth and there's no flour clumps. Everything is getting the same amount of liquid. This is beautiful. So I'm going to add in a couple more scoops of cream here. Now, of course, if you don't have raw milk like me, 
um, with a cream line, then you can just buy half and half or you can use um, heavy whipping cream and milk, whatever you want to do, that's fine. How much would you say that was? Maybe half a cup, half a cup of cream. And now I'm just going to pour, this is milk and cream. Don't wanna to do too much or else it'll be difficult for the roux to properly thicken it. You wanna go a little at a time when you're trying to thicken cream. So stir that roux into the milk. Oh, yum, this is looking so good. If you are going to add cheese to this soup, now would be the time to do it while you're doing this. Um, you know, I didn't think about that. I guess cheese would be good in this, but I don't have any like ready to go. My cheese is in the freezer and I don't feel like dealing with it. So I think I'm gonna pass on that. Or maybe I'll add some on top later. I'm gonna do one more. I'd say that's probably enough. That was a little over a cup, I'd say. A cup and a fourth, maybe. See how it's really watery around the edges, but in the middle, it's really thick. You gotta keep going. You really wanna get all that liquid nice and incorporated, and that's a proper roux. You want the whole thing to be really nice and thick. Not too thick, though, and that's the purpose of adding more milk. Even here, I think I could probably stand to add a little bit more. Don't want it to be too thick. Yeah, I think that was a good good call. Ooh, nice little brown bit right there. That's, that's tasty. I'm gonna go ahead and move the skillet to the side over here. And I want to get my, my uh, Dutch oven back front and center here. Let's get this back up to temperature here. I'm gonna put this on medium heat. This has just been chilling and um, kind of just simmering it. It honestly wasn't even quite simmering. I should have had the heat up a little higher, but staying warm, I guess. It's looking really, really good. My bay leaves are still in here. I'm gonna leave them for now. They're fine. Let's, I wanna see how my carrots are doing. I wonder if they're soft. I like a good soft carrot in my soup. Mm. No, my carrots are still really hard. So you know what I'm gonna do? And this is just personal preference. I like my carrots really soft. I'm gonna put my lid on. And like I said, I don't have a ton of time here, um, but I'm gonna let this, I'm gonna turn the heat up a little bit. I'm gonna let this simmer for a few minutes and see if I can't soften those carrots up a little bit. And I'm gonna do some cleaning while I wait. All right, because I've had this simmering for a little while, I might find that my liquid has decreased more than I want it to. So when I stir in my roux, if I have a soup that is too thick, then I might need to add more broth. Okay. Let's get our roux in here. Oh, I have really weak hands and wrists. All right. Okay, I'm gonna turn my heat down because this is bubbling away and it doesn't need to. And I'm just gonna whisk in that roux. You want it really, really well incorporated. Oh, yum. Oh my gosh, that smells so good. It looks a little thin to me, so I'm going to let it simmer for a few minutes. Try to get as much of this roux as I can. That is how you know you have really well seasoned cast iron. Look at how easily that's pulling away from the pan. And this is, this is a liquid. I mean, this is not even like, it's not like we're talking about a solid here. This is a liquid and it's coming right off the pan. Love my cast iron. I use my cast iron for everything. I removed my bay leaves. This would also be a fine time to add some cheese if you were planning on adding cheese. You know what, I might since I have a minute. I have my um, big box grater in the dishwasher, but I do also have this small handheld one. And I actually really like this one. I use it a lot when I don't feel like getting out the big box one. And here I have a Gruyere cheese. And I'll just, this was in the fridge. I actually need to use this up, so. This is bubbling up a little bit, so let's see if it's getting any thicker. Oh yeah, oh, this is perfect. This is, 
I don't like a soup to be too thin, but you'll find if you have any experience making your own soups, there's a fine line there because soup can get away from you and get really, really too thick pretty, pretty easily. I've had that happen. And this is a beautiful consistency. This is definitely like a nice creamy, medium consistency soup. So I'm actually gonna turn the heat off because it'll thicken up a little bit more as it sits. And uh, I call this done. Let's get a bowl. All right, you guys, let's give this a taste. Got carrots, cabbage, onion, garlic, salt, pepper. We've got the flavor of those bay leaves in here. Oh man, oh, it smells so good. Yeah, that's definitely, to me, this is a nice consistency for soup. Mm. Oh my gosh, oh my gosh. Okay, first of all, those carrots are perfect. Oh, that tastes so good. Love that. Mmm. This is the perfect rainy day, feel good, warm in your belly soup that I have ever made. And I just wanna recap for you here how incredibly healthy this soup is because we used all the veggies that I just listed as well as the raw milk which even if you don't have a raw milk source which I urge you to try and find one and, and I have a video coming out on that soon we're going to talk about raw milk but I urge you to find one um even if you don't like if you were to use um like a half and half or um, milk with cream or something like that. Milk is still a healthy fat. It's still really good for you. We used the homemade chicken broth. Oh, we had the, that really good fat in there. So much flavor, no additives, no preservatives. We used the butter that I got from a local farmer. You saw how deep yellow that color was full of nutrients, another really healthy fat in there. We had the bay leaves and the salt and the pepper. Salt's really good for you. So many different nutrients in this soup. The cheese, that um, I, that was a raw milk cheese actually that my local grocery store offered. It, it was one of two options. There weren't many options for raw milk cheese. Um, yeah, um, all sorts of good stuff in here. My, my house smells good. I was really adamant about wanting to film this for you guys for what I said at the beginning of the video. I want you to know that even if you cut out all the processed stuff that you were pre previously buying from the grocery store, you can still eat very, 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 very well. This is delicious. This is healthy. Um, it didn't take that long. Honestly, I think we've only been in the kitchen for 30, maybe 45 minutes, and that I'm also filming, which takes a little bit of extra time. You could whip this out in half an hour easy delicious. I've got a big pot of soup now for us to eat on for the next few days. And I just want you to know this is not hard. I've completely cut seed oil out of my diet. It's been 11 or 12 weeks now that I've been doing this and I don't miss it. I'm eating very well. I feel great. I love all of the, the new recipes that I've been learning and trying. I've started making a lot of the things that I used to buy from the store because there are plenty of things that I've just completely cut out of my diet altogether. But slowly but surely, I'm replacing those with homemade versions. Like I'm making my own Pop-Tarts now. I'm making my own Hot Pockets now. Um, I recently learned how to make my own crackers um, because crackers are full of stuff from the grocery store, which is just, that's, they're so simple, why? Um, I have like a four ingredient cracker that I've been making. Um, and I use that to eat like hummus and things like that. Uh, cheese and crackers. It's just, it's it's not, it's not that, it's not that hard. It's, it's honestly not that bad to cut all of this out of your diet and to make your own food and to source your own healthy local ingredients. So I really wanted to come to you today with this delicious recipe and say, hey, look, I'm doing it. You can do it too. Okay. If you have any questions for me, leave them down in the comments, but otherwise, thanks so much for hanging out in the kitchen with me on this rainy day. I can't wait to see you in my next video. Have faith, my friends, and keep moving forward.